Hello, this is Captain Sweep of Planetary Guardians Media, and I'm here with Max Rumor, who is coming up with a, an innovative new profile, personality profiler using the Enneagram. And I'm sure a bunch of other things that I don't know about, so I'm just going to go over to him so he can give a big download about what he's doing, what gifts he's bringing in, and what this particular product is. Yeah, great. Um, great to meet you. Um, have some good friends in common. Our friend uh, Rom up in Vancouver said we needed to meet, that we were two uh, fellow map makers and integral cartographers. Uh, for me, the vision for True Self, our new, um, new product and new company, I guess over the last year or two, occurred spending a lot of time in the, uh, the integral world. Uh, I previously, out of, um, about a decade ago, founded a company called The Startup Genome. And uh, we did a lot of um, integral mapping, building a uh, overall management science uh, framework of uh, how do we take the best ideas in terms of what makes startups successful. Pull from Steve Blank, Eric Reese, Lean Startup, Customer Development, put it all together and figure out what's the key for uh, startups to be successful? Why do they succeed? Why do they fail? Map it multidimensionally, gathered a database of 30,000 companies and um, put out reports over the years. And while I was working on that, I was getting deeper into like I said, the integral world and psychology and spirituality and consciousness and um, thought, oh, everything we're doing for the business world, um, I would like to do for people and for consciousness too. And so that seed was planted a long time ago, um, probably back in 2012 in my mind, um, when I got exposed to a lot of Ken Wilber's work and um, saw that whole aqual system and cosmic addressing, I thought, oh, you know, we, this needs to serve as the, the back end um, infrastructure for the future of the web and future of society that we need consciousness as a key principle that's embedded deeply in, um, in how we organize society and organize our systems. Um, we know lots of things about people at a surface level, their demographics, their age, their salary, where they go to university, who their friends are, and um, your race, ethnicity. I mean, those are the variables that we're organizing society around. So uh, to me, excluding consciousness is one of the most uh, you know, overlooked things, but you know, that's what we're here to do. Right? It, it's, uh, it takes some time to get that level of sophistication and intermingle the like higher dimensional states of where things could be with how to build the uh, business models and structures to get there. So we're starting with True Self built around the Enneagram. Um, I've been into the Enneagram as well, probably back in since 2011 and uh, saw it as a really amazing um, introduction to someone's self understanding and self transformation journey and that it's uh, really a superior uh, model with a lot of esoteric roots to Myers-Briggs or Big Five or other personality tests that, that people have taken. So that's where we're starting. We have a really great free Enneagram test. I've had 25,000 people take it right now and um, over the last year, and we just put out our uh, private or private social network product. So people can now see the personality types of their friends, family, coworkers, um, and understand their type and their, uh, their friends types and how they get along. And so that's really the foundation of the system. And uh, Enneagram is taking off um, just in the last year. It's made like an exponential jump over the, over Myers-Briggs. Um, so my goal is, uh, our team's goal is to become the world's most popular personality test within three years. So that's at least 200 million people. And um, that begins the, you know, the foundation of this larger uh, platform to be able to meet people where they're at on their, on their personal development and self-transformation journey and, and guide them to what's next. So connecting them to books, courses, coaching, um, and uh, yeah, much beyond that. So. Wow, um, and, and it's you're looking for people to come in right now. I imagine like you're at the, the 
launch of the, the latest part of it? Yeah, um, I mean, the test is, the product's live, the test is free, so anyone can take the test at trueself.io. Uh, we're not scaling yet. You know, I, I actually, you know, from my background with um, the startup genome, and we're actually relaunching the uh, uh, kind of sister brand fairly soon called Startup Science. So that's at startupscience.org, uh, where we frame it as the startup genome is the data. And there's a different team now running that, and startup science is the, the theory or the frameworks and models. Uh, we, we've mapped out a life cycle of what um, successful companies and projects move through. And the primary phases are discovery, validation, efficiency, and scale. And um, there's a variety of dimensions underneath that, but roughly in discovery, you're looking for problem solution fit and validation for product market fit. In efficiency, it's where you optimize the conversion funnel and the unit economics. And then scale is when you begin to press on the gas pedal. So for us, for true self, I see us as having product market fit with an Enneagram test, with the product of anyone who gets the relationship profile, like gets one of them with their some significant other, they, they're, they're pretty impressed um, with the level of insight that it has about that relationship. So I feel we have product market fit there. And so now we're focused on a lot of optimization before we go, you know, start pressing on the gas pedal to make sure everyone hears about it. Well, maybe, maybe we should switch just for a few minutes and I could tell you what I've been working on. Yeah. Maybe, maybe see how they fit a bit. It seems, it seems to be a, a bit of a fit. Uh, a long time ago, I, I, I came across a sentence by this mystic George Gurdjieff. And, and yeah, I think it was by one of his students saying, John Bennett, and it was that if you could not put something on the Enneagram, you did not understand it. <laughs> and, it, it hit me kind of like a, a boom because it's three plus six. Mm -hmm. it's, it's nine, but it's three plus six. There's a primary triad of three. And as you know, the one, four, two, eight, five, seven. And yeah. you hit that divide by dividing any number by seven, you get the same one, four, two, eight, five, seven, one, four, two, eight, five, seven, one, four, two, eight, five, seven. So it's, it's a mathematical truth within the math of life, right? So it's, it doesn't have to be, let's say, some, not just a weird mysticism, it's actually the math. And then yeah. here's the, the saying there's a law of three, and there's a, uh, and that law of three is like Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Uh, you send out an energy and it comes back and then it, it gets reported and then you gotta have to come in with a reconciling energy to bring it to where you want it to go. So that trinity can come together in six ways. So if it's A, B, C, you can go A, B, C, A, C, A, B, A, C, B, C, A, CAP and CPA, right? So there's, there's, it's a fundamental structure that when you map information upon it, so I've been looking at it differently. Not, I, I knew the personality profiles, which is where most people were interested, but I, I got very interested in, in as a process because it's, it's mapping the fundamental law, like laws of the universe that if you use. Um, right, yeah. It's a, it's a it's geometry, it's a core fractal pattern that exists across people place systems at all levels of reality. So I think it's, yeah, once people say, oh, this really gets me, and then they're like, oh, well, this pattern can open up into like all these other patterns that correspond in all these different levels of reality, that really starts to blow your mind. So when you take language and you map it on a, on a mathematical structure, the structure becomes a template that if you keep using the same template, it's kind of like your mind starts to get organized around the template. So a lot of people, they may not use symbols to organize information, but most mystical traditions have some sort of symbolic representation, of higher truths of things that language can't really represent. So my aim was looking at how do you create a whole system, a whole business economic system. The main thing was distinguishing old paradigm from new paradigm, distinguishing the past fear and this old way of thinking of the future with love and the new way of thinking the paradigm and in the present moment is your choice point between am I going to participate in this thing that's killing us or am I going to participate in this world I want to build with other people. To me that's a big distinction at the top of the thinking library if you want to call it. And then 
these new systems are coming into the new paradigm and what you're doing is you're taking this esoteric truth and giving this pathway of the Enneagram. And what I've got is a place to put them in terms of right place, in terms of like the design of the new paradigm. If you design your ideal job based upon your gifts, based upon how you want to spend your time, it makes sense, right? Like, yeah. Like, so yeah. Taking, well, taking what you have, or someone's tapping into this um, very esoteric, maybe or mathematically perfect, maybe or um, very different way of doing it, and then tapping it into another different way of doing it. But the new paradigm is not going to be the old way. It's not going to be you know fear and oppression, do this or we'll kill you. It's more, hey man, what do you want to do, and how can we help you to get there? So what yeah. you is you create it, you know, what you 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 got your hand on the pulse of society in a sense and offering this this new way of seeing yourself and a new way of approaching life. One that then can tap into a way to design that that thing into a new world. So I think you and I both chose the Enneagram as a symbolism, you know, very important, but then went at the situation in a different way, do more from a personal point of view, we collective point of view, but both of us using Ken Wilber's four quadrants. So these are match points in design system interactions, right? It's models that you and I choose that are universal that we both agree upon become the way we see each other's pieces and how our pieces fit together. And I go, holy oh, God, you got that, you got that. I don't have that. And I got, I have this, this, and this. You don't got that. We put them together, oh my God. Mm -hmm. And so what Ramayan saw, because he's another architect, playing with many different pieces, he saw the bridge between us. And we were working together on a, a video app, as you know, Beam. first first within Veeam, but this new app called Caravan's coming out. And Caravan, if, I don't know if, if you know about it yet, yeah. but it's basically a multi-team storytelling methodology. So if you have a phone, I have a phone, I've got six others, and let's say you go, Okay, all the apes in Vancouver who are in commercial drive area meet here at four o'clock for music jazz. <laughs> right? Yeah. So within our app, you can put that, like, not at the first iteration, but the next one. You can put that in, and then a little message would go out because all the people that are within your profile mechanism are they connect, they can choose, okay, do you want to participate in? You plan, you want to choose and this, and each is, each is feeding the other the way I see it. And that, then there's this, you know, kind of a great way to bring people together to who, you know, all the eights can learn about each other. Maybe you go, no, we want a one, a two, a three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine come together to cook a meal. Yeah. Right. And each brings a phone, each adds a piece of the story, and all of a sudden you're making these web TV episodes, you know, in such a, a creative, way uh, let alone what you're going to create together but it's, it's a way to meet people it's, it's, it's any type you've got a universal messenger a universal profile thing the yeah. universal businesses can come together <laughs> you know it's just the, the, the potentiality is endless so yeah beautiful yeah i think uh they say the you said the meek will inherit the earth but now it's the integrators Will inherit the earth. Mm. And, um, hey, yeah, can, was, can I just ask you? Maybe uh, both of us have come from probably very different places to get here. And I'm just wondering, maybe a bit of your history, that things that charted your course a bit, big people or big ideas that kind of got you where you are. I'm just wondering. Yeah. Let's see how much of my life story to tell now. Uh, who are my biggest influences? Well, I guess we've touched on Integral being a big one. Uh, I have another um, path. I grew up in the Bay Area. I grew up in San Francisco. So um, I think there was a there was a choice. I knew, uh, you know, I think I, I learned probably around my mid-20s, got introduced to a, a lineage with uh, connection to Gurdjieff and the Trans Himalayan teachings and Meher Baba, like all around the evolution of the soul, which is something that's not so included in integral and you know, art, art, 
our souls, especially if we have been awake in previous lives, can choose where we're born next. So for me, the Bay Area was a conscious choice. I knew a lot of my path was going to be around uh, integrating spirituality, technology, and finance. Um, you know, money is like the root and, and spirits from the crown. And how do we how do we bring it all in? Um, this is an era where it's time to bring everything together, all the convergence across many lifetimes and societies and cultures, everything's designed to converge right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and so yeah, tech was a big influence on me um, while looking for uh, direction, orientation. Um, I definitely saw the world of technology and then the, the singularity and futurism crowd had a lot of my interest for a while. So like I, in high school, I interned at the Institute for the Future and um, was in some of the founding meetings of Singularity University and almost interned there. Um, I've since taken more distance from those groups as I didn't feel they understood the interior aspect of the world. Um, it was more on just the, the right-hand quadrants from an integral perspective. Um, but I also spent a lot of time with a mentor there, John Smart, around uh, his work, which is a, a holistic uh, generalized systems theory uh, called evolutionary developmental systems theory. And they also have that triplet of um, on two poles of Evo Devo and then a, a synthesizing computational one that creates emergence. Um, so that triangle is a pattern that repeats there. And that was a core part of my work when I went to build startup genome and startup science was it's like, oh, there are these meta frameworks that describe how to, um, how to build knowledge and order out of um, pre-paradigm works, disorganized fields that entrepreneurship is. And so the way that I ended up transitioning from the singularity group um, and seeing where the, where the world was going was, okay, we're, we've, we've been through these big epics of um, epics with E-P-O-C-H of uh, infotech and then coming as biotech and nanotech and AI. That was sort of the path that Kurzweil charted out in a, a smooth exponential. Um, if, you, if you smooth the lines of history, that's where we're headed. And I was like, okay, how do I want to participate in that process? And I looked at and said, okay, I want to be, I'm, I'm more drawn to be the entrepreneur. Um, how do these ideas, how does new, new science and, and research get and new R and D tech get into the world? It gets into the world through startups and entrepreneurship. And I looked at that and said, okay, well, we're not very good at creating startups. Like 90% of them fail primarily due to self-destruction rather than competition. So mm -hmm. I want to solve that problem. And um, that was what I set out for myself at 18 or 19. Um, and yeah, then I've been on my own hero's journey, can chart my own path through a lot of the Campbellian stages of the call to adventure and the trials and tribulations that seemed like they would never end. And um, How old are you? I am now 28 and a half. 28 and a half. So you're you're right at this the cusp of your uh, Saturn return. Yeah, and um, uh, I've been more. I've 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 learned and, and gotten readings more through the Vedic astrology school, and um, through there they also have really. Have you gone into Vedic astrology at all? A little bit. Um, I wouldn't say I know that well. One of the things I appreciate about their charting system are the dashas and their ability to um, chart how particular aspects of your karma get activated at particular times in your life. So they map what's going to happen at certain times. And for me, I had a seven-year cycle of Mars when I was born, and then a 20-year cycle of Venus, and then I open up into another cycle, um, uh, 27 to uh, 33 to 34. And... Um, that matches up really well with my intuition. Um, and even the trials and tribulations I saw was a kind of uh, training period that uh, you know, the people above wanted me to go through. They're like, we're gonna give you a lot of responsibility. So we're also gonna, you know, kick your ass a bit for, um, you, you, you know, you think you'll have it and then you'll be, the rug will be pulled for you and see how you respond. And that's part of the test and the initiations. And 
like building the strength and conviction and also so that when you get going um you know everything's really solid with like the right right relationships um uh yeah i mean business partnerships that haven't worked out for one reason or another have been my achilles heel so far and um now that's all really solid and, and everything so all the all the different projects and ventures so that feels really good so it sounds like you started early and you've been on a long road since yeah <laughs> yeah you can learn a lot in a short amount of time when you um, um and uh, yeah i've been fortunate to just like have the opportunity to go for it and even when i wasn't going for it when you know been hit by depressions or illnesses i had like multiple chemical sensitivity at one point and um even those were like full on in intensity. So I got the ups with intensity and I got the downs with intensity and it's like accelerated the learning process. Um, I've always been a, I think pretty much always, but when I look like at the past life soul level, there's, there's ones who go on the extreme and ones who take more of the middle path and I'm, I'm on the extremes on like both polarities. <laughs> <laughs> High zeal, yeah. lots, lots of zeal. Hey, can I show you something? Yeah. You have a pad in front of you? Uh, Paper and a magic marker, maybe? No, but I can get one quickly. Yeah, which one is this guy? So, what I want you to do is to draw, draw that. It's four, four concentric circles. Okay. Okay. Now, in the middle one, the very center, draw the word uh, right in choice. The next one is flow. The next one is synergy. And the next one is harmony. And now, you know, it's. Wilbur's four quadrants, you can do it in the four quadrants or you can actually do four concentric circles like this. And so if you put beside choice, the inner individual, right, okay. just right beside choice, uh -huh. right, right down inner individual. Okay. Yeah. Then beside flow, put outer individual. Then synergy is inner group. And then harmony is outer group. So now those are the four primary interfaces of the inflow matrix operating system. So that's the main operating system that I've been working on. And the starting point is using Ken Wilber's four quadrants, but Maybe a little bit different, but just distinguishing those four and then giving an, a sort of like a the main goal for each level. So at the inner you, it's choice. At the outer you, it's being in the flow state. At the group level, it's synergy. And at the community level, it's harmony. Mm -hmm. So that's at the background of the inflow matrix. And then what I'm about to show you right now, now if you can, on another page, draw a circle, draw an Enneagram. Draw an Enneagram on another page. Okay. okay, so now I'm going to give you a word. Now we're going at the synergy level, the Enneagram framework. So I, as I said, I use the Enneagram as the framework. This is at the synergy level, so this is at the inner group. This is more an organizational structure. And at one, no, we'll do at nine. At nine, put, put stewardship. Mm 
And then at three, at learning. And then at six, put synergy. Okay, so now that's a primary triad. And if you if you sort of put right right above it, there's a, there's a vertical alignment between let's say flow and synergy levels. So there's a word at each level that represents on the same pattern. So right beside learning put job, like put a little line, put job. Yeah. And then at synergy, put relationship. And then at stewardship, put agreement. So now we're starting to use two levels, the synergy level and the flow level. And the primary triad of the flow level is job, relationship, and agreement. And to me, if you go to any business, anywhere, you can start with that. You know, who's working where? And you know, what kind of agreements do they have with each other? And what relationships are they in, right? That's it. So that's at a business structure level. Very basic words, right? But they've organized everything below it, right? So yeah. now... If you go to one, at one on the Enneagram, write research. And at two, put infrastructure. At four, put operations. At five, put creativity. At seven, put services. At eight, put marketing. And in the center, put, put a little dot, put communications in the center. So now I'm gonna give you the flow word for each one. So at research, it's field. Field. Field, F-I-E-L-D. At infrastructure, it's resources. And then at operations, it's activities. Five, it's products. At seven, it's path. Path? Path, P-A-T-H. At eight, it's strategy. And at communication, it's conversation. Now what we have is we have the Enneagram at the flow level of those words that apply to the individual. We have an Enneagram of the synergy words that apply to the organization. Now we've got them together, right? So you just put two layers on. Now I'm gonna add a little, uh, if you don't mind me adding one more layer before we sort of get back to a, what we were, a, a different type of conversation. Yeah. There's the, one of the main things that I've been playing with is multiple time cycles and giving a structure in circle to multiple time cycles. And it's, I called it the, it's the time translate. There's, there's this operating system of nine time cycles. And now we're going to put those time cycles on those organizational functional words, synergy words for you to see that you know most organizational structures, right? They don't bring time in. They may have, yeah, here's the finance, and here's in, uh, operations, and here's marketing. 
and they might start with those three and break them down, right? But they don't bring in time, like marketing is not at a different time cycle than finance, right? So this, this is what we're adding in here. So research, yeah. at research it's lifetime, so you, you can put brackets or something near it. Lifetime, okay. lifetime, Life. lifetime cycle. And then at infrastructure and resources, it's yearly cycle. And then at learning and jobs, it's lunar cycle. And then at operations and activities, it's daily cycle. Then at creativity and products, it's a seasonal cycle. I'll tell you later why we just broke the time sequence in here. Yeah. At synergy, at relationships, it's hourly cycle. And at services and path, it's minute cycle. Marketing and strategies, it's the present moment. And stewardship and agreements is, is timelessness. And then at communication and conversations, it's all times. So if I'll just finish off, it's it's each of those operational functions, research operations, are operating under a different timeline cycle, time cycle. Yeah. So, and now put it back to you and give me some feedback or whatever you want to say about what you see. Hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. When I first got into map making and modeling as in my kind of early 20s, I wanted to create like one model to rule them all. <laughs> and as I got deeper in studying lots of different ones, um, you know, that, that one model to rule them all is like God, infinity. Um, it's, and in, in geometrically speaking, it's like this, you know, hyper-dimensional, like 14, 15 dimensional like object. And all we can do is create projections. And so anytime we're doing this type of mapping, it's often looking at like the meta layer and noticing all the hidden variables that are present in the system. And just adding like any framework that begins to add some order in the chaos uh, is, is often very helpful. And um, they we're often looking at what model will, uh, what, what, what outcome and goal do we want to produce? So this, you know, this like that making for like accuracy sake and trying to precisely model the world as best we can, although that can be a futile exercise because we only approximate it. Um, so the question is, what do you want to do? Um, but then, um, yeah, interoperability is important. Um, the more you have meta models that can transverse contexts, um, uh, the light that you put a lot of stuff on the Enneagram, I think is pretty cool. Um, as you're talking about a lot of the different business variables, I'm in my head saying, oh, okay, interesting how you mapped it that way. Cause I mapped it slightly differently for, um, for startup science. Um, but ultimately, you know, we want all these different views of this kind of larger object, um, and then depending on what you want to do, then um, then you take certain views um, or perspectives for that allow you to see the world with higher resolution and see patterns and make connections, and just like overall be be smarter when you have these types of schemas that can allow allow you to. Uh, you use less computing power in your brain or less horsepower because it's just like the patterns reveal themselves by nature of having the right, the right view things just snap into place. So um, I get overall where you're headed and then I'm very curious like seeing how it, how it shows up in, in action and what, what problems it enables you to solve better than, um, than not having any model. But, okay, great, great question. Um, I, I am very interested in, in seeing your startup model and the differences between it. 
Yeah. I'm going to share that now, but I'll answer your question. Maybe, maybe afterwards we can look at that. Yeah. Because I, I love model comparison. Again, you're just saying, I mean, if you're taking startups, the startups is a very different vehicle than a, a full fledged organization where all the parts and pieces are there versus a startup entrepreneur where you got to do everything. What's the startup perfect? What was your intention with this? Modeling what? Uh, hold on. So, one thing, we can do another little exercise. If you can get a piece of paper um, and sort of uh, rip up, get 10 pieces of paper that are about this big. Uh -huh. Maybe you can uh, rip out a piece of paper from the book or something. Um, so, like, you could have 10, 10 index cards. Yeah, you could have 10 of those or uh, rip them in half and five of them. I, I find working with paper is, I mean, it's sort of old school, right? You grew up before computers and you're I'm used to crayons. And I like things in the hands. I like, like if you have a, a card here, right? And you have another card. If these were on paper written down, you couldn't connect them in the same way. But as soon as you put things on cards, you, you, you are able to sort of see patterns. You're able to, um, you're able to move them around. You're able to uh, put them on maps. You're able to get concepts when you start to put them on frameworks of sacred geometry. You can do that if you have the cards. Yeah, but, yeah. but most people sort of associate it with tarot in a sense that the decks, the card decks that I've created are business language models just separated in cards. So now you can interact with them in whatever way you want. But there are, I just gave you a static, right? It's a one template. But with these tools, you can basically brainstorm templates the rest of your life and still come up with things that, you know, are, are great. I think, as you know, once you sort of step into the multidimensional side of things, it's, it is unlimited. Like it, it's such a, a, a change from limited options, little kind of things. It's, it's, it's just, it's, yeah, there's a lot for everybody. Mm -hmm. okay. so are, you, are you ready? Yeah, I've got, I've got my ten. Okay, so now, uh, with your magic marker or your pencil, whatever it is, uh, brainstorm. I mean, you probably already have them, but 10 values that are your essential values to run your, your business right now. Towards running my business? Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay, so now what we're doing is, is we're gonna create a value system for you within the next 10 minutes um, based upon this business model based upon your choice right now, your values, but there's two ways you can do it, with divination or with conscious choice. And mm -hmm. both, most people choose divination because it's fascinating and it kind of works, but this is a big thing. You may want to go, I want to put this there, I want to put this there. So what is your choice right now? Do you want to use divination or do you want to use your, your choice? Uh, well, it's not set in stone, so we can go with the fun of divination. Okay, so now what you do is you turn them over, upside down so you can't see them. And then kind of shuffle them around a bit so you, you forget the order. Mm -hmm. And then on that map we just made, the synergy map, yeah. place one of those values, upside down still, at each one of those positions, and one in the middle. Oh, but my cards are half of size of the map. Well, just, just use your map as a sort of compass and then sort of create an order where you know the card is for that particular place. Uh, oh, I see. So there's one for each any room type and then one in the center. Yeah. Okay. 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 okay, so now we'll go uh, Piece by piece, we'll start at nine again. You want to turn over the, uh, what you have at nine? Transparency. 
Okay. So tra it's kind of like transparency at stewardship. So now you might want to, what does that mean to you? Does that, what's your immediate sort of reaction to that? Mm. clear about where we're taking people and why, what are our intentions. I think that that's a very new paradigm. Like old paradigm is, you know, behind closed doors, you don't know the hidden agenda, who knows what they're doing versus, right. you know, you, you're doing a good thing and you want everyone to know you're doing a good thing and you have nothing to hide kind of thing. Right. right. So it fits, does it feel right? Does it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now go down to three at learning. Holistic health. Holistic health at learning. Okay, that's awesome. Uh, how does that fit? Well, people are, as they're using the Enneagram three and the energy of drive and being successful and being efficient and getting things done, they're making sure to take care of themselves too. Uh, and that it's not uh, building a culture of, of people being full holistic individuals and doing what they need to take care of themselves while also, um, while also striving for excellence. Nice, I think it's great. It's a holistic health, I mean, it could be the most important value of them all. If you don't have that, the rest kind of suck, right? Yeah. Okay, it's, it's synergy at six. Purpose. Okay, how does that come together, do you think? Well, best relationships are the ones where every part within the whole knows its purpose and that drives synergy and when every when every part and component is on purpose that's when the most beautiful emergence happens awesome so good placement huh yeah okay maybe go to one at research transformation. Nice. Uh, so yeah, what I see there is how does transformation happen? For many people and in many traditions and cultures, transformation is a bit of a mystery. But if we're going to offer transformation to the world at scale, we need to be a bit more systematic and scientific and codify while still leaving room alive for randomness, chaos, and the mystery. But uh, yeah, like how does transformation happen? I think even in the integral community, I talk about people moving up the vertical stages, mm -hmm. um, moving up any vertical chart. It's like, well, we don't really know why people move. If they do, it seems like meditation helps. It seems like psychedelics helps. We don't really know what drives vertical development. Um, so that's what I see as part of our mission is to, uh, to do that research and have a core feedback loop between research and application and the way that research flows through. Uh, I have a construct in my meta strategic mapping that there's a flow, a sequence from, from research the service or consulting or coaching one-on-one -on -one work to media to tech. So that's a way of going deep. Then you move into one-on-one, -on -one, then one-to-many, and then many-to-many. -many. Nice. If you, if you look on the map, research is at one and service is at seven. So you've got a lifetime of research looking at the direct application of your app and services connected mm -hmm. by the inside of the Enneagram. And that's one of those things, right, of the Enneagram. Right, that line of integration. It's pointing to looking ahead when the doing might be on the outside, on the inside, and thinking. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
okay, so we're at two at infrastructure. Compassion. Compassion? Compassion. Nice. And how, how does that go together with infrastructure and resources? What's that? You didn't hear? That I'm not immediately seeing how to connect compassion and infrastructure. <laughs> they feel... Do you want a, you want a hand or... Uh... Yeah, I mean, tell me more what you see. I'm also interested, like, compassion fits very well with Enneagram, too. Oh, it does? It? Um, I'm curious how, like, I wouldn't ordinarily see infrastructure as connected to Enneagram, too. So. Okay, well... To me, if we're, we're moving from an infrastructure of fear to an infrastructure of love, uh, infrastructure is like if you have a house and you have dishes and you have food in your fridge, you're gonna make a meal. Now, if you, if you have compassion, you're gonna feed the people around you. Uh, right now, we have, let's say, profit in infrastructure. We have control in infrastructure. We have uh, greed in infrastructure. Hmm. So compassion, you're bringing love in, you're bringing a higher virtue in, you're, you know, it's, 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 you're doing things different than everybody else because you're being so loving around what you're creating. And, and if you're bringing the two's nature of compassion into the profiling system, I, I think that's, that's beautiful because the idea behind this, when you're saying, well, how does this come into being, is at the core of your operating system, at the center of your information system. These values are the spokes that are the ways that you are communicate and connect to the world. Yeah. So I think it's uh right. It's, it's yeah. Well placed. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Uh right, I see it from that perspective. So you've added what is the intention behind the infrastructure as that was the answer to uh that I wasn't seeing. And yeah with compassion that especially from a Buddhist perspective they talk about the difference between empathy and compassion whereas empathy you're, you're directly mirroring what the other person is feeling in your nervous system and it often can drag you down and prevent you from being service and so compassion is held as a higher virtue because you're able to see exactly what someone needs while still maintaining your own clarity and sovereignty and so i see the infrastructure that we're building is that being able to see really where people are on their journey and being able to serve and support them. And uh, because we're using this integral perspective, it's uh, one of the things they do really well is transmute dominator hierarchies to healthy holarchies, mm -hmm. such that someone being farther along a path is not better or worse, that everything has a right to be where it is. Mm -hmm. And so no matter where someone is in terms of where they're struggling, we have infrastructure to see where they are, track them, and know what we can do to support them. And the Enneagram 2 is amazing at uh, really feeling into people and knowing what they need and giving them what they need, and tracking that. Lovely, lovely. Uh, okay, what's, what's it operations and activities are for? Abundance. Sorry, abundance? Oh, nice. And are, are you also, I, I mean, I imagine you're correlating your profile with the Enneagram profile to the numbers. I mean, all would fit at any point, but there are probably, you know, primary. Oh, you mean with my personal profile? My personal Enneagram type? Uh, yeah, what, what are you like? Well, so we used as the base the uh, try typing or true typing system which is that uh, both Oscar Chazo and Catherine Favre and a number of other Enneagram researchers have found you have a core type in each center, head, heart, and gut. Um, so I, in that system, I'm five as my primary type. 
uh, and then three and nine are my secondary and tertiary. Okay. Let's let's keep going because we have got to finish this off. Um, so yeah. for abundance, uh, yeah, I think there should be a direct uh, cycle um, of input and output between your daily operations and activities and the generation of abundance. Such that that is a positive feedback where more daily activity, more effort generates more abundance for all constituents and parties involved. So the individual performing, the, the employee or the contractor, the customer or user and the company, and that it all is the uh, abuzz, abundant positive feed forward synergistic system. Okay, that's awesome. Okay, now at uh, five, creativity and products. Creativity and products. Uh, I have loving connection. Loving connection? Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, Beautiful. <laughs> I like what Buck, one of Buckminster Fuller's quotes is that love is metaphysical gravity. It's the binding force in the, uh, in the upper left quadrant or in the all the quadrants. Um, gravity is in the right hand quadrants and so uh, or or from a Buddhist perspective love is baked into the absolute field that permeates everything so therefore all creativity and products are embedded within a non-dual inestimable field of love and connection so that's what your product does for people. Uh, I think you're going to be pretty success successful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the the relationship profiles I feel are our highest value experience that we can create right now, which is getting your enneagram type, getting the enneagram type of someone else who's important to you, and seeing how they combine and and seeing like, well, okay, well, these are our our patterns that are operating at the like egoic level. These are our these are wiring of our vehicles and how they intersect uh, is a pretty um, powerful realization recognition. And we put that all out for free and we have richer relationship profiles than um, you can find in any book or any program as far as I know. Awesome. Okay, at uh, seven, at uh, services and path. service you have service yeah ah that's funny that's a that's a direct correlation <laughs> service and service well yeah service squared um <laughs> the path of service to be of service uh reminds me of the bodhisattva vow where you commit to the path of awakening on a such that that becomes permeated as part of your being on a minute to minute basis where uh, everything is created out of the, the Bodhisattva vow, which is the commitment to the to serve the awakening of all sentient beings that the, uh, the infinite game of life is not done until we all wake up to remember our true nature. Nice. Uh, okay, the second last one is uh, marketing and strategy. Connection. <laughs> so you had loving connection and you had connection. Oh, I guess I duplicated. Well, they're, no, but they're different. There's like the way the, you know, this with love and then there's like, you know, you, you use that eight energy to really just make sure things get connected. It's like, <laughs> sometimes, you know, that you got to throw like the love out the window and there's just the tough, you know, there's the tough love where people don't necessarily see it as love, but there's just the drive. Like we're going to make this happen regardless of, you know, <laughs> everything else. You, know, you can either <laughs> get on the ride or get out of the way. And that's what the eight is great at. That's what marketing is supposed to do is, you know, one of our marketing needs says, okay, once we're ready, once we've completed the efficiency stage, now it's time to blanket the internet with ads. 
we're going to tell everybody about true self. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that that's the energy of just, you know, will and focus and connecting everything up to make sure that this system doesn't just live in our heads, um, but makes it out into the world. That's really nice. Hey, I mean, I, I, I don't know, I guess everyone has an interesting relationship with AIDS, but to me, they are the, the ones that make themselves known first, or they're the ones that I gravitate to because I, I have a lot of respect for them. Because they're, they're, uh, they, whether the warriors or the, they will not be subdued, right? Like, isn't the biggest fear is fear of being subdued? So yeah. They'll always fight for the, uh, the right, right cause, hopefully, but if they go to the nine, anyway, I'm kind of jumping. I've been I've been eight in a lot of past lives, so yeah, it's, you know, cracking. So I, and then in this, I have the rare. We do a correlation between the um, I've learned a correlation between your physical archetype and your enneagram type, and you use the archetype system of uh, warrior, king, lover, sage, scholar, artisan, mm -hmm. um, priest, and uh, king and queen. And so I'm the uncommon combination of warrior and uh, five. Scholar, or, yeah, oh, really? fine. I have warrior, scholar, king, and priest, all of it. So, um, I mix a lot, but um, yeah, uh, well, I think when you match systems, that's when you start to come up with really interesting configurations, right? And, uh, yeah, yeah, so with, where uh, Catherine Favre talks about it as archetypes and stereotypes. So, there's the ones that commonly go together, the stereotypes, like normally eights are warriors and fives are scholars. But it's very interesting when you get these other combinations. Okay, and then the last one is communication and conversation. Uh, good. Integrity. Whoa, nice one. Yeah, at the center of the Enneagram, you got to have everything all working together. That everything knows its place, everything has a right time, right place, right context. Uh, alignment through spirit, purpose, uh, sorry, through spirit, soul, and ego, all of their line of connection of purpose and integrity, the system of being is just uh, well integrated and aligned. And right speech matches right action. So there, it took a little bit longer than 10 minutes, but maybe not, maybe I think within 15, you, you just created a synergy value system in the inflow matrix operating system. Mm, beautiful. I will share this with our team. And I, I see this as you know, the beginning of an ethical business structure coming together with a, another Infotech partner and looking, I'm building this inflow matrix uh, and different pieces are out there. And what I have is this language structure that is looking to you know, find other pieces of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. And um, this is part of it to me. If, if we have like that value system, you know, it's 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 like that's the connection point. The connection point is knowing this. The connection point is agreeing with this. The connection point is going, wow, I really want to support you and your organization because you guys are this is what you're bringing into the world. The world needs that, and I'm yeah. so excited. Just yeah, you're channeling Sam, Simon Sinek there, right? by not what you do but why you do it what are the what are the values and reasons behind it mm -hmm. i think we're coming to the end of this let's say particular session or uh, time together uh, i i would like to have you know more and jump like there's a lot we have to sort of figure out let's say in terms of the connection points and uh sit with things i know you're busy i'm I want to be busy, but I'm getting busy. I, I just got a watch two days ago, and I, I've been out of, I've been sort of in timelessness for 25 years or so. I've, I've got to come back into the world with this thing that, as you know, it's not so easy for the inventor or the artist to, <laughs> to have their new paradigm stuff kind of seen or understood or desired. Mm -hmm. I, I feel the world is changing now enough so that there are enough people to do this see the way it has been done and go we, we can't keep doing that we need a new way to do things so you're making your way back down from the mountaintop to join the people yeah. stumbling and falling and you know and 
hiding behind these glasses and shit. <laughs> what Enneagram type are you? I, 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 I want to give you some feedback on your, I did your thing and I, I want that first question to be a drag and drop thing that you can move around because every time I pressed it, it didn't go one, it didn't do anything. And then when I did the last one at the top, it pressed one. So it, I got blocked right away. As soon as that happened, I stopped. And I've had other people say they completed it. But I, I, would, I would prefer that first question to be a thing that I can put. If I want to create a hierarchy out of that, I want to be able to move them. There was, there was too many of them. And so if I was placing them all in order, I was all of them. I could have been any one in any different context. So I, I, got, I got a little frustrated. <laughs> uh, well, if there was a bug, uh, I haven't seen that. It's probably we've had we have very few reports of any issues on. on bugs. Really, um, I, I sent you a message in Facebook saying it, but that's not probably the best. Maybe, yeah, we can take a look at it. Um, maybe just try refreshing or restarting your computer. It should work. Um, but yeah, we're going to, in terms of the overall format of the test. Uh, we're going to do a much larger overhaul um, and uh, make it much more dynamic and you know, change the whole feel, break out of the, the card construct, most likely. Um, but it's quite a big project to overhaul sure. test. And so we're getting pretty high accuracy. And then even when we're not, um, when people don't feel their type is right, and a lot of that's user error, and uh, well, the instructions are important. It's, how have you been most of your life most of the time, not who you want to be or think you should be. And so it's trying to avoid all the different contexts and going for personal development because it's like the seed that's been true for you most of your life. Ultimately, the Enneagram is an archetypal system and we can embody all the different energy contexts. But what is our core wiring? Where do we go in a place of fear? And if you have a if you do the real like interview process, there's often a common set of fears and coping mechanisms when going into stress and contraction especially as a child, um, and then a common path out of that for many types. Um, so I uh, yeah, I would say you're, if I was gonna type you energetically, I would say you're the four, five, nine tri-type in some order. I mean, I definitely have felt like a four, I think like rejection and frustration has definitely been one of my biggest. Mm -hmm. I think you can identify it with a shadow, but sometimes I felt like a lot like my seven. Um, I mean, I do see them all in me, and I do uh, recognize those primaries. I would like to finish and complete it, so we all start it up again. Uh, yeah. Um, but can you give your uh, the websites again? We should actually put them on there. Okay. Yeah, it's trueself.io. And that will take people to a landing page where then they can take the test. Um, and yeah, inside, one of the things that I also recommend for people is we have a learn the Enneagram section and you can browse all the different types and you can read the profiles and see how much they resonate with you. And that will give you a sense of how much it resonates. And then after you've taken the test in settings, we also have a feature that you can manually change the type if you decide that, oh no, I'm feeling, I think I'm more this type. And we're also very close to setting up the network of Enneagram coaches where people will be able to do a uh, confirm their type or even coaching programs with different uh, Enneagram experts to really make sure they have that right. We're going to be adding online courses soon about how to transform your type or if people want to add it to their coaching practice and intro to Enneagram and have it serve as a whole marketplace and organizing place for the whole Enneagram community. So how do we bring lots of great content and courses and have it all live on our on our system wow and i think next time uh, i would like to see how to add in lean and how to add in caravans and to, and to perhaps look at a, again the fit of the larger picture of how you and i are connected yeah okay. yeah ram and i've already talked about uh a while ago we we first met when was it december November, December, uh, about uh, how to use it as a, how can it be used as an API. So we haven't formed any partnerships yet. We have conversations and our, our tool is ready for that. So 
um, whatever info in the profile, if someone that creates an account on both, we can pass the Enneagram data and any data in the profile such that other applications, you know, list their, their type and the name and whatever content, like the worldview um, or the overview. Right. I love it. I love it. I mean, there's so much room to play in the future. I mean, people are very, 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 very interested in themselves. So I think what you have is going to catch on quickly. And I look forward to speak to you next time to see, again, how infotech startups can come together to uh, assist one another to, to transforming this world of fear into one of love. That's a good idea to you and everybody else. So <laughs> this is Elijah Ignatia, and AKA Captain Sweep with Max Warmer. And we will see you soon.